Uh, hi people, me again as always, morning away from work. Yeah, um, this video as you can tell or see is on the Greek or Titan God Atlas. The one that uh, maps globally are named after. A-T-L-A-S. -A uh, and this video specifically is for someone in the past that asked me to cover him. And I felt like doing so at the moment, but I was reminded to doing so by Atlas himself. So, Brian Daniel, you know who you are. This one's for you, buddy. Enjoy. Um, so yeah, I'm going to begin by simply reading off of his Wikipedia section, uh, which you can find linked in the description of this video. I'm only going to read a bit. Uh, so the people that don't know who Atlas is, they literally have no idea. They're going to be familiar at a basic level. And as always, if you want um, to know all about him, then just consult the Wikipedia entry itself. If you're that interested in him, then read the entire wiki entry for yourself. In any case, in Greek mythology, Atlas is a titan condemned to hold up the heavens or sky for eternity after the Titomachy. The Titomachy or Titomachy simply refers to in Greek mythology when Greek gods, the three main gods, Greece, uh, what if I Greece? <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean uh, Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades, they overthrew the titans which came before them essentially as. Um, as um, rulers of the, their respective pantheons. According to the ancient Greek poet Hesiod, Atlas stood at the ends of the earth in extreme west. Later, he became commonly identified with the Atlas Mountains in northwest Africa and was said to be the first king of Mauritania. Atlas was said to have been skilled in philosophy, mathematics, and astronomy. In antiquity, he was credited with inventing the first celestial sphere. In some texts, he's even credited with the invention of astronomy itself. Atlas was the son of the Titan Iapetus and the Oceanic Asia, or Climene. Uh, he was a brother of Epimetheus and Prometheus. I do need to note that, you'll see that at the end screen of this video, I have covered Iapetus and Prometheus as well. Prometheus in 2018 and Iapetus in 2019. Um, he had many children, mostly daughters, the Hesperides, the Hyades, and the Pleiades. Ple Pleiades, and the nymph Calypso, who lives on the island Ogygia, or Ogygia. The term Atlas has been used to describe a collection of maps since the 16th century when Flemish, photogra photo when Flemish geographer Gerardus Mer Mercator, I think originally his name is pronounced Gerardus Mercator, yeah, yeah, he's, he's Flemish, so yeah, that has to be the way his name is natively pronounced. In any case, Gerardus Mercator, published his work in honor of the mythological titan. The Atlantic Ocean is derived from Sea of Atlas, the name of Atlantis mentioned in Plato's Timaeus or Timaeus dialogue derives from Atlantis, Nes Atlantis Nessos in ancient Greek, mean, literally meaning Atlas's island. Okay, so yeah, now you guys know in general who Atlas is. Yeah, Atlas is the titan god that literally maps are named after. Thanks to this famous geographer, Gerardus. Um, and before I go on to his attributes and whatnot, I do need to point out that I did sense that Atlas was, um, he had a correspondence with, with an air sign, zodiacally speaking. But I thought Aquarius for some nature. But that was just a guess. But I was right on the element. Okay, Atlas, based on his personality, because I did have basic knowledge on Atlas, you know, who Atlas was, and, and, and I was like, yeah, 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 Atlas, the god that maps are named after, Titan god Atlas, the guy holding up the, a globe of the earth, etc., etc., okay, maps and all of that crap are named after him, essentially, okay, whenever someone says Atlas, they think of, oh, a map of the world, so Atlas, essentially, to the Greeks and the civilizations that worship the Titans, he was essentially the embodiment or the personification of navigation, to put it that way, as in everything, maybe, from, you know, from, from east to south, from north to west, in a matter of speaking. Now, let's get on to it. Atlas is mercurial. He corresponds to four degrees in Gemini. Um, the four degrees primarily stands for energetic conduction, or at least emphasis there on that. Uh, by that, it simply meant that Atlas essentially has the ability to heal people but at the same time he also has the ability to 
be flexible in terms of uh, communication in any way, shape or form, whether it be literature or verbal, just day-to-day -day dealings, things of a Gemini-based nature uh, or things attributed to Gemini. Um, the other thing is that, unfortunately, for people that were interested in working with him, I'm, just, I'm not saying that you don't have to, that you don't, based on what I'm about to say next, that you don't have to work with him or you can, you can still do so, but keep in mind what I said. Atlas, for the most part, for all, if not the most part at least, is primarily for show, honestly. Atlas is impractical to work with if a magician wants to work with him. The thing is that Atlas has the talent to really like make someone skilled in whatever they want to be skilled in in relation to his attributes that I just mentioned. But do bear in mind though that Atlas doesn't deal specifically in foreign affairs. Atlas literally deals with literature and communication on a global scale or level. So that includes navigation. Navigation would not be something that specifically falls under under uh, Jupiter and its corresponding zodiac sign uh, Sagittarius now. Okay, I mean it can, but it really depends. But in terms of, hey, looking up day-to-day -day stuff globally, finding out a city or finding this out or that out, yeah, it would fall more on the Gemini. So Atlas would still be your go-to guy for that. But at the same time, Atlas, like I said, Atlas has the potential to make someone great, but um, let's just say that that potential might fizzle out. And that is one of the very few negative attributes of Mercury and specifically its underlying zodiac sign Gemini. Okay, uh, like I've told people, generally speaking, Mercurial spirits overall, they are, they work really quick and fast and flexible. I mentioned that in my video that you can find in the end screen as well called Delving into Mercury. But the drawback is that they don't pack a punch. That's the case with Gemini by default, since it deals with day-to-day -day thingy. Day-to-day -day affairs, okay. Um, Gemini is a zodiac sign as a whole, and all of its corresponding energies and spirits and whatnot. They work super quick and fast, because that's the way air works. You need to literally, within this, the context of what I'm discussing, you need to literally compare it to air. Air is what? It's airy, super fast, lightning fast. But does it have any mass to it? Nope. <laughs> does it have any weight to it? Nope. Exactly, that's what I mean. Air is fast. Boom, 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 boom. Yes, that's air. But it's super light to the point where you can barely feel it. Any magician that has worked with um, the aforementioned, so any spirit that corresponds to Gemini and Mercury overall, as well as anything you can think of, okay? That includes Belial. I'll also uh, link Belial's um, article in the description of this video for people that don't know who Belial is because Belial is definitely, B is one of my favorites. B is essentially, after Samuel and Sandalphon, B is essentially my third favorite and my third in command, so to speak. The third spirit that I value the most on paper, at least in practicality or in actuality as well. So when I first focused on Belial, for example, the very first time, when I was still essentially a beginner, and I specifically had laid emphasis on Mercury. The energy was so light that I was like, wow, okay, this is super light. This is like someone opened the door and like I felt a brief gust of wind and that's it. Compared especially to other spirits that are really, are real heavy hitters in terms of their energy, like fire spirits or et cetera, et cetera, or spirits that correspond really, spirits that are just very potent. Okay, in any random sign, with the exception of Earth's uh, of air signs, are really heavy. It's like you really feel the weight as in, yeah, you really just feel the weight. And it's the same thing here. So because of Atlas being geared that way or configured that way, um, don't be surprised if whatever you were working on with him fizzles out easily. It essentially dissipates or evaporates the energy will dissipate and evaporate easily based on its nature, its Gemini in nature, Mercurial in nature. So those are the things that you need to keep in mind. Atlas is nice to discuss, he's nice to be admired as an ah, to like an occultist, especially an armchair occultist, but to work with him, in all honesty, no offense to him, it's, it's impractical in general to work with him. So it's up to you if you still want to go ahead after everything I said. And yeah, in any case, that's all. Uh, see you guys later. Bye.